Over Christmas last year I finally finished the first Bayonetta. Great game, but there was something that stopped me really connecting with it the first time I tried it on the Switch. I think it's my fault. I went into it with the wrong attitude. I was thinking of Bayonetta as a modern game, a recent release. My expectations for it graphically and mechanically didn't match what the game was giving me. I love retro gaming, hence the channel, but I know what I'm getting into when I plug in a Super Nintendo cartridge. This isn't about a preference, rather about the disconnect. It would be equally jarring if I were to plug a cartridge into my Super Nintendo and somehow it was, I don't know, Cyberpunk 2077. Man, that would look awesome on a CRT. I have to find a way of doing that. Anyway, spending more time with Bayonetta over holidays, I started to appreciate it more for what it was. Only then did the experience and my expectations start to come together and I started having a really good time. I'm Bill, this is the Retro Sofa, and in 2024, does Bayonetta belong on it? Firstly, I'm not going to get into terminology. I know there is a discussion about retro gaming, classic gaming, vintage gaming, old school gaming, and that's great. Enjoy the debate. I'm going to say retro, and I'm happy for you to mentally replace it with whichever term you prefer. We're also not talking about retro style games like Shovel Knight or Dusk. We're talking about games that are old and running on systems no longer in production. The question is about how old and out of production for how long. I guess for me this is an exploration into what this fledgling YouTube channel will be and what it won't. I don't mind admitting to you, when I started writing this script I didn't really know where it would end. I didn't know if I could reasonably make a video about Bayonetta or not. You probably have quite strong beliefs about it, and statistically you're quite likely to disagree with the idea of calling Bayonetta a retro game in 2024. What a ridiculous notion! Well, let me put it like this. Bayonetta was a PlayStation 3 game. When the PlayStation 3 was released, the Super Nintendo was 15 years old. Nobody would have doubted back then that the Super Nintendo was retro. In 2024, it's 17 years since the PlayStation 3. And Bayonetta turns 15 this year. Oh, but there's more to it than that, isn't there? It's not simply a length of time. You can't just pick an arbitrary point, say, 15 years, and everything older than that is retro. 15 years doesn't make any sense anyway, because the Super Nintendo was already retro when the PlayStation 2 came out in 2000, and that's only eight years. It's about the leap in technology. Okay, which leap? 2D to 3D? Does that mean PlayStation 1 isn't retro? But then does that mean the PlayStation 1 was retro? when the PlayStation 2 was current. You know what, there's a good argument to thinking about it in terms of technological leaps, but it's still kind of arbitrary. I mean, all of this is. But let's think of some of the biggest changes that have happened in gaming and see where we can maybe draw a line. R slash retro gaming draws it at the fifth generation. You all know your console generations, right? The graph up here. We are into the ninth generation with the Xbox Series XS and the PlayStation 5 and still partially in the 8th generation with the PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch still being current. 5th generation was Sega Saturn, Sony PlayStation and Nintendo 64. I think you would have to stretch to argue that 5th generation isn't retro. So I'm going to assume we can all agree that 5th generation is retro gaming. So we'll draw a line there to begin with. Everything Apple Pippin and earlier is retro. Well, except that's not quite what the retro gaming subreddit says. They also allow the Sega Dreamcast as a Generation 5.5 console. Their argument for this mostly boils down to it not having a second analog stick and the games being quote-unquote 5th gen-esque. They expand more on this in their wiki. I could see that, but I wonder if they would change their minds about the Dreamcast if it had survived just a little bit longer. The Dreamcast released in 1998 but discontinued only three years later. The GameCube was the next to be discontinued, and that wasn't until 2007. For consoles in a generation, we look at the release date of the console, but many of the games that would define a generation come later, as developers have more time to exploit the full capabilities of the systems. The seventh generation didn't start until 2005, when the Xbox 360 released. There was quite a gap where, had the Dreamcast been successful, it would definitely be running some solidly sixth generation games. You could say that doesn't matter, because it didn't. Okay then. I'm not going to argue with you. This is a voyage of discovery, and we're all on it together. Anyway, r slash retro gaming is just one argument, but we'll keep fifth generation as the baseline. I'm not convinced that the Dreamcast can be separated out from the rest of the sixth generation, though. This is a side-by-side -side comparison of Sonic R, Sonic Adventure, and Sonic Heroes, Saturn, Dreamcast, and GameCube. Sound is coming from the Saturn because this song's a banger. I think Adventure and Heroes are much closer graphically, don't you? 
As great as Sonic R looks, and it is technically really impressive for the hardware, link in the description about that, it doesn't come anywhere near the fidelity of the other two. Dreamcast is solidly 6th generation, and if it's retro, so is the PlayStation 2. In my opinion, anyway. Also, personally, I'm going to consider it quite suspicious that R slash retro gaming happens to draw its line exactly at the year 2000. As does the biggest chain of second-hand game shops in the UK, Sex. It stands for Complete Entertainment Exchange, but they thought it would be funny to call them sex shops, and Charlie Brooker was one of the founders, so who am I to disagree? Must be funny. But they too have a retro section on their website that goes exactly up to the Dreamcast. But for how long can we reasonably keep the year 2000 as a nice round cutoff point? It was 24 years ago. I'm good at maths. Did that in my head. And don't tell me it's simply about technology. The Dreamcast had online play built in and its games were far too smooth and creamy. We need to move on. In 2024, let's stop pretending that the Dreamcast is retro and the PlayStation 2 is not. If you want more evidence, there's a link in the description to a video comparing the graphics between the two. There's a quarterly retro gaming magazine here in Germany called Retro Gamer. Their first three cover stories in 2022 were Grand Theft Auto 3, Halo and God of War. All solidly sixth generation titles. I mean, the last edition has Sonic and Knuckles in the cover, but I think it's fair to say that they consider the sixth generation to be retro. And I think in terms of both time and technology, they have a good point. This was the first generation where internet connectivity was a big deal for consoles but it was still in its infancy. There weren't online storefronts where you could buy the same games that you could buy in a store as a physical release. DLC was just starting to become a thing, but instead of these massive story expansions we think of today as DLC, it was horse armor. Online gaming was there and supported on all sixth generation consoles. In terms of display technology, all of them were analog video out, there was no HD yet, and as such, it was the last generation to solidly default to the 4-3 aspect ratio. I think there are very clear dividing lines between the 6th and the 7th generations, particularly in terms of display. The switch from standard to high definition, we can all agree, was a huge leap forward for all screen-based media. Is it retro? Can I talk about the original Halo on this channel? Well, no, I can't, because I haven't really played it. But in terms of retro, I think, yeah. The word retro, whether you're talking about games, other media, fashion or furniture, is really about nostalgia. It's evoking a different era, often whichever one in which we grew up. It's statistically highly likely that you grew up with a PlayStation 2, an Xbox or a GameCube, and are now a somewhat functioning adult. I'm old. I've come to terms with that. A lot of people whose first experience of Sonic the Hedgehog was Sonic Adventure 2 have far more successful careers than I do. Can we honestly say, in 2024, that the retro cutoff is the original PlayStation? This GameCube is 22 years old. It's got no online features, no HD graphics, no USB ports, wired controllers, and a handle. So I think I'm going to be quite happy covering GameCube games on this channel. Whether you think of it in terms of technological leap, the passage of time, or nostalgia, the sixth generation ticks all the retro boxes. But this does present a problem. Most of my argument here is that retro isn't simply a time cutoff, but it's defined by technological leaps and the age of the people who grew up with the consoles. The biggest technological leap, clearly, after the sixth generation was HD graphics. So what do we do about the Wii? In my house, there's a very clear divide. This wall behind me. Let's go behind the scenes, or the wall. That's my HD TV, and underneath it, there's a Wii U and a PlayStation 3. If we go back into my retro game space, the newest console in here is the original Wii connected to my CRT TV via RGB SCART. Retro is not a, a strict definition. It's an emotional word that evokes different feelings to different people of different ages. And to me, thinking about where I was in my life when the Wii came out, and thinking about where the Wii is technologically, i.e. it's a GameCube but without a handle, kind of retro, right? The Wii feels retro. At least to me. And you? Search your feelings, you know it to be true. The Wii came out in 2006. If the Wii was your first console growing up, you're in your mid-twenties. You've got a job. You might have kids. You haven't got a house, but that's not your fault. The Wii is older now than the Super Nintendo was when the Wii came out. Counterpoint, 
There's your USB ports, there's your Wi-Fi, online gaming, digital distribution via WiiWare. Plus it was in the same generation as the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, and those are HD consoles. But the Dreamcast had online play. If r slash retro gaming can call the Dreamcast generation 5.5, could the Wii be generation 6.5? Can we do that? I don't think we can, for the same reasons I had about the Dreamcast. Plus the Wii released after the Xbox 360. What do we do? I want to say that everything in this room is retro and everything in this room is new, but that's principally divided depending on what connects to what TV. If the Wii is the same generation as the PlayStation 3, and the PlayStation 3 is in there, it can't be retro, can it? That also means that if we decide the seventh generation here is retro, that means that everything that currently isn't in production is retro. We're currently sitting in both the eighth and the ninth generations. Non-retro would mean Switch and PlayStation 4, machines that are still coming off production lines. And Retro is everything before them. I mean, the eighth generation is dragging on a bit. It started with the Wii U eight years ago. But still, can we do that? The Super Nintendo was retro 15 years after its release. But technology moved a lot faster back then than it does now. The leap between seventh and eighth generations wasn't as big as the leap between fourth and fifth in terms of technological advancement or in gameplay. But that said, we are in a different era from the Wii. And if it's not retro and it's not recent, what is it? And what does that mean for the PlayStation 3? and for Bayonetta. I enjoyed Bayonetta more when I enjoyed it as a retro game. There's clearly been a jump in graphical fidelity since it came out in 2009, and if you start at Bayonetta thinking of it as a new or recent game, it's just not going to feel right. There is a strong vibes-based argument to calling Bayonetta a retro game and the PlayStation 3 along with it, but I think it has to be more than vibes. It's vibes plus standard definition. The Wii is retro, the PlayStation 3 isn't, this is my channel and I'll do what I want. The PlayStation 3 goes in that room, the Wii goes in that room, and if some friends come over and they want to play some retro gaming and they pick up the Wii remote, I'm going to let them. We would like to play. Awesome, I love retro games. Okay. I'm not sure. I could go either way on the Wii. But in 2024, the GameCube is definitely a retro console. What's your opinion? Where are your vibes at? Let's chat in the comments. I want to say it's okay to cover Wii on a channel called The Retro Sofa, but maybe I should wait another year or two. And hey, in that time, probably finally finished Metroid Prime Trilogy as well. Bayonetta can wait too. It blurs the line by being both retro in terms of its graphical fidelity, but also retro styled in its gameplay. At the end of the day though, it doesn't matter. If it's retro to you, that's good enough. And unless you're a shop having to put particular things on particular shelves, there's no reason the lines can't be blurred. But remember when I opened Retro Gamer earlier? This issue has an article about Assassin's Creed. Let me read you a little bit from the top. For ziehen sei dem Leser, der eben mal kurz den Umschlag prüft, um sicherzustellen, ob er wirklich das richtige Magazin in Händen hält. Keine Sorge, es ist immer noch Retro Gamer und keines dieser Pressorgane, die das Neueste vom Neuen vorstellen. Wer es erst nicht gestern, dass Assassin's Creed die heiße, sexy Neuheit war, das Protspiel für die neue Konsolengeneration? Gewiss aber, das war eben die Generation von Xbox 360 und PlayStation 3 und ist damit schon erstaunlich viele Jährchen her. That seventh generation covered in Retro Gamer with a comment that it was a surprisingly long time ago. And it sure was. Maybe Bayonetta isn't a retro game today, but it can't be far off. Anyway, no matter what games you think should be played here, thank you for joining me on the Retro Sofa.